Yikes. <laughs> hey guys, Dr. Michael Tang here, physiotherapist. If you got injured for some particular reason, I don't know why, but if you did, then you're in the right place because this particular video is going to be going over the exact knee brace for you. Let's be honest, most of us don't even think about getting a knee brace until we actually need to get one. Then we go to the store or we go online and we look for it and bam, all these different selections that you need to pick. And you're like, all right, well, I don't know what I need to do. I just have some knee pain. Which one do I get? So in this video, we're gonna go over exactly what kind of knee brace you need for whatever you got going on, whether that be arthritis or you tweak your knee for some reason. And then we're gonna go over the pros and cons of each one, so that way you can get the exact brace that you need. So I went to a local department store and I picked up all these different knee braces, and knee sleeves, and even a jumper's knee strap. I would say these are gonna be the most common knee products that you'll find in any store. But yeah, so we're gonna go over them. So first one, we have the jumper's knee strap. Most of the time, people use this for jumper's knee or patellar tendonitis. It's effective in scenarios where knee pain is a really minor problem, especially if the knee pain is on the bottom of the patella, so the inferior portion. It's pretty adjustable, it's easy to clean, cheap, under $15, and it's really mobile. But the downside of it is that it really doesn't give you more stability than just a little bit of compression under the patella. Uh, and because of that, it's, it's not much lockdown. You can really only use it for that. So the next, we have knee sleeves. Um, I have three on the table here. This one's a basic one. This one's a medicated one. So the medicated one, you just have medication present in the sleeve itself, like a topical, and a, the compression one. So most of the time, you'll see people wear this because it's really cheap and it's under $15. And this is almost like the go-to thing to get when you have general knee pain. However, it's not super effective because it doesn't give you a ton of lockdown. Uh, it's not stable, it doesn't really stop your patella from moving at all, regardless of whether it's compression or not. The only scenario where it may or may not help would be with a swelling scenario, but even then this is not super good. But it looks cool, it normally comes in a bunch of different colors, so Red, white, green, blue, I know I have black here. You'll see normal people wear and you'll even see athletes wear. And next we have the wraparound braces. These I would consider to be the all-arounders because they are really versatile in a ton of different situations. They are restrictive enough to give you that stability that you're looking for, but not so restrictive where you can't move uh, and do anything that you want to do. A lot of times people will wear this if they're having general knee pain. Sometimes people with arthritis will wear it or if they kind of just tweak their knee a little bit, they'll go ahead and get something like this. And in comparison, I mean, these are not super hard to put on. They're pretty easy to clean. They're even more durable than say these products over here. And they're usually under $25. The downside is that sometimes these things work a little bit too good to the point where it'll mask a particular problem. But because you wear this, it becomes less. And so then you end up putting off going to see a medical professional to actually deal with it, but in the meanwhile, you're getting more and more damage. Another downside is that these tend to be a little bit hotter because the material tends to be a little bit thicker in comparison to say these products, unless you get a open back knee brace, in which case then you're sacrificing some stability, but there's some scenarios where that would be good. And finally, we get to the hinge braces here. Uh, you would only want to get this if you are looking for maximum stability. So if the problem is a pretty big problem, such as like patellar dislocation or a MCL or LCO tear or, or big strain or something like that. These are heavier duty. The material is a lot thicker. The ones that I have here, this one is more adjustable. This one is just straight locked down with Velcro. Uh, both of them will provide you with a ton of support from both medial lateral as well as anterior posterior, right? So side to side as well as backward and forwards. All in all, very, very solid lockdown. However, it comes at the cost of mobility, but sometimes you want that, right? Sometimes you'll see football players be wearing something similar to this, and that's for impact protection, such as, you know, getting hit from other football players. 
These tend to be pretty hot because of how heavy the material is, and it's not super easy to put on. But these are good where maximum stability is needed, and likely if you need to wear something like this, you should probably see a medical professional. So on the way waiting to go see a medical professional, these would be. And I was thinking about what's the best way to put all this information together to something that's actually useful for you. So if you have a particular knee problem or knee pain, arthritis or meniscus hair or LCL sprain or whatever it may be, what's a good way to look at it? The idea I came up with is I'm gonna put all the information in the chart because I like charts and charts are easier to read. So here I've compiled a chart of the most common knee problems. Depending on the type of device you're watching this video on, uh, it might be hard to see the text on a whole full page. So I'm going to split the chart up in half so it's easier to see. I'm also going to put a link in the description if you want to download a PDF version of the whole chart. And that way you can also print it out if you want. So how I have this chart sorted out is on the left hand column we have the potential pathologies and on the top row we got the different types of knee sleeves or braces that could be effective for the potential pathologies. And how I have it graded is with either a green check mark, which means that it's effective, and a red X mark, meaning it's not effective. And then maybe just means that sometimes it's effective and sometimes it's not, just depends on the situation. So I'm gonna go over the chart from top to bottom, going from left to right. So first one's gonna be osteoarthritis. I would say this particular pathology is probably the most common reason why people will go and get a knee sleeve or brace in the first place, right? If you had to guess, people start having some knee pain, especially if they're older, they're just gonna automatically assume that they got some arthritis or sometimes they'll go to the doctor and the doctor will tell them that, hey, you got osteoarthritis, this is what you got, here it is. And I would say for true osteoarthritis, knee braces or sleeves are only gonna be somewhat effective because the pathology itself literally has to do with joint structures being too close together, whether it be bone on bone or cartilage on cartilage. So therefore, if you have a strap, brace, or sleeve, unless those things can create some space in between the two structures, wearing any of those things is usually not gonna do that much. But I will say on rare occasions, a wraparound brace sometimes helps. And there's like two potential reasons why that'd be the case. If you look at the chart, I have a green check mark on the knee sleeve with compression and a wraparound brace because with enough compression sometimes you can get a little bit of distraction between the two joint structures whether it be cartilage on cartilage or bone on bone and i have a diagram here roughly about what i'm talking about this rough representation is talking about two joints and this particular spot is the joint capsule between the knee under normal circumstances uh, the idea is that when you apply some compression from the outside, the fluid that's inside the joint capsule will be pushed outwards, like so. And the other reason is because of the pain receptors that are present in the skin. Uh, without getting too deep into the science, these receptors are what's responsible for having a decrease in pain when you add some pressure or touch the skin softly. Uh, so think about if you kind of stub your toe, you rub it and it feels a little bit better momentarily. So that's why we got some nice green check marks on knee sleeve with compression and a wraparound brace. For the version of knee sleeve that doesn't have compression, it's really only going to be good for uh, pain receptor input, which I personally don't feel is worth getting if that's, that's what you're getting it for. And the hinge brace could be effective if it had the compression component, but it's so restrictive that it's like going way too serious about it. It's like saying you want to catch a nice bass from the backyard, but instead of using some light tackle, you decide that you're going to use a heavy rod that you would catch sailfish with just to catch some bass. And I mean, like, you could do it, but like, chill, it's not that serious. So then you might be thinking, what about medicated knee sleeves? Well, uh, there might be some relief, but it's really only going to be for a little bit, so I just put a red X mark on it because I don't think it's worth it. Next, we got the column systemic arthritis, uh, have parentheses, rheumatoid arthritis or gout or septic arthritis. Uh, this is really in reference to people who got arthritis because of a internal disease causing arthritis. I would say when it comes to this particular scenario, only a wraparound knee brace could be helpful. 
Uh, and that's because we're going to be trying to create space or maybe get some pain receptor input, just like we were talking about in osteoarthritis. Uh, but given the type of pathology it is, I would say a true fix for this particular problem is probably going to require some medication or surgery, depending on the severity. A compression brace most likely won't be effective, but on super rare occasions, uh, you might get some relief from it. A knee strap or a sleeve isn't going to do much, and once again, the hinge braces are way too restrictive. For medicated braces or sleeves, I would definitely advise against it because it's hard to say whether or not the medication in the material of the sleeve could give you a adverse reaction. It would probably be best to talk to a medical professional for further medical intervention. And on to knee bursitis and swelling. For these particular problems, I would say the best benefit would come from compression type of sleeves or braces. The goal here is to get enough compression to help reduce the swelling so that it doesn't pool in the knee or the lower leg. Having bursitis in the knee is pretty general, but the usual presentation is just pure swelling. And oftentimes when it is purely just a swelling problem other than a brace or a sleeve, I actually recommend a lot of times compression stockings because it tends to be more effective. And even though sometimes the knee bursitis is related to it, the kneecap or the patella, a knee strap probably isn't going to do much because it's not related to stability. So therefore, a wraparound brace or a hinge brace really is not going to do too much. Best bet is to reduce the swelling based on compression. And in the clinic, after osteoarthritis, the most common knee problems I'm going to see is going to be patellofemoral pain, chondromalacia, and patellar tendonitis. All these different problems are related to something called patellar tracking. And what that refers to is this kneecap or the patella sliding back and forth on the trochlear groove. And sometimes it's called the patella groove. The pain usually happens when the patella is rubbing on the patella groove and then it gives you some problems in the area, right? Swelling and hypersensitivity. So therefore, if you limit the amount of motion that happens at the patella, then you can probably get some relief. Now's the time when the knee strap can finally be effective because the knee strap is designed to limit the amount of patellar motion that happens up and down or superior and inferior. This is why a lot of times you'll see people wear it, especially for uh, football players or basketball players or sprinters in general, because when you go ahead and flex and extend your knee quickly, that's exactly what is happening. And sometimes a wraparound brace will help to a minor extent especially the ones that will restrict the patellar motion, which usually helps with the knee pain. Wearing a brace doesn't normally fix the problem, but at least it does kind of help with the pain. Although there's some hinge braces that are made with patellar restriction in mind, once again, they are way too serious and they restrict the mobility when it's really not necessary. Ah, so we finally reached the iliotibial band syndrome, or sometimes known as IT band syndrome. You'll see on the chart that I have all X's on it, and you might be wondering why. Straps, sleeves, and braces really won't help because the problem is usually more related to the quads, hamstrings, or hips than it is directly related to the knee joints. The iliotibial band on the side is either shortened or tightened to the point where it's pulling the patella out of the normal grooving tracking pattern. It's probably best to get it looked at by a medical professional and then actually get it addressed that way, not to get a brace or a sleeve or anything of that matter. So now we get to the bottom portion of the chart and these problems are gonna be significantly more serious, which is gonna require a lot more stability. So if you look at it, that's why most of the hinge brace or wraparound brace is gonna be with the green check marks and all the X check marks are all on the ones that are less stable. All right, so the first one to start off all the more serious matter knee problems is patellar dislocation. And in this case, the patella joint gets dislocated from the patellar groove and so then it becomes a lot looser and less stable, especially right when it happens. Right? So knee straps, knee sleeves, uh, with or without compression really won't be helpful because it's not going to be strong enough to give you the stability that you're going to be looking for. Uh, 
I wrote wrap around brace as a maybe because sometimes it can help. So if it just pops out just a little bit, then a little bit of a wrap around brace would be good enough. But for more severe cases where the thing just completely comes on out, then uh, a hinge brace is going to be needed at that point. ACL, MCL, and LCL sprain, you could throw in any ligament, to be honest, that's present in the knee, so if you want to throw in PCL, you can. Uh, sprains usually sound a lot worse than they actually are, and that's because a sprain means that the ligament itself is not completely torn all the way, so it's still intact and it can still give you a little bit of stability. But even if that's the case, it typically hurts and it's going to be weaker than its 100% form. It still makes the most sense to keep it protected since these are usually the essential ligaments that give the knee its stability. A knee strap or sleeve really isn't going to be enough to support the knee at this point. And so if it's like a minor sprain, then you probably can get away with a wraparound brace. But if it is a full on tear or like a higher grade tear, then a hinge brace is going to be a better fit because at that point, you're probably going to need a little bit more stability to kind of hold you in place and do what you need to do at least to make it to the physician. And next is going to be fracture of any of the bones in the leg whether it be above or below the knee. If there's a fracture you're likely going to be casted up for immobilization so that the joints can heal together but after healing and taking off the cast chances are the knee and the whole leg is going to be a lot weaker. Wearing a brace during the beginning, especially in the beginning, is pretty helpful because the muscles aren't doing what they need to do yet, yet the demands of life don't stop. So when you first come out of the cast, the best time to wear a hinge brace would be at that point. And then as you get a little bit stronger, then you can kind of go down and have a little bit less stability and more mobility with a wraparound brace and then eventually not needing a brace or sleeve or anything for that matter by that point. And finally, we made it to the last one, the torn meniscus, whether it be medial or lateral. A torn meniscus usually happens because of a fall, which chips a meniscus, or there's some serious twisting or turning going on, which causes a ton of shearing force and a rotation pattern. So the best bet is to look for a wraparound brace, which will give you some stability without restricting you too much. So hopefully by the end of the video, you have a little bit better of an understanding on what's going on with the different braces and when you should pick one over another. But quick summary of everything we just went over. If you have a minor or a moderate type of problem, go with a wrap around brace. If it's more serious, then your best bet is probably to go with a hinge brace. And if you're dealing with some jumper's knee or patellar tendonitis type of thing, you might want to consider a knee strap. Knee sleeves, unless you're trying to be very fashionable, I wouldn't really want to get them, but you can if you like. I have links to all the products that are reviewed uh, below, and I also have links to more budget options as well as more premium type of options. The premium options I'm talking about is like for specifics for the wraparound, um, like medial, extra medial support or extra lateral support. But anyways, thanks for watching. If you got questions or have comments on other topics that you would like me to go over, please leave it in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video.